Like more from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Now during Staples Small Business Deal Days, when rewards members spend $100 or more, they get $20 back in rewards, plus another $10 back with a Staples Connect app. Rewards offer ends May 27th, limit one, redeemable in store only. Say big for your business at Staples. Is this, the this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. History is not on the Lakers' side tonight in Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals against Denver. 149 teams have tried to come back from an 0-3 deficit in the NBA playoffs. All 149 didn't make it. Somehow, the Lakers need to put four wins together to see if they can shake up history and make it to the NBA Finals. They need to start tonight at Crypto.com. Otherwise, their season is over. Tip off at 530 on ESPN. The Miami Heat blew out Boston by 26 to move within one win of the NBA Finals. Gabe Vincent, one of four undrafted Miami players, led the Heat with 29 points. The Dodgers lose again in St. Louis. They gave up 37 runs in their four-game series with the Cardinals. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. I feel like we. KBLA Talk 1580 is pleased to partner with the Empowerment Congress, the Gathering Spot, the Institute for Nonviolence, and Days of Dialogue for a Juneteenth program called State of the Freed to educate fellow citizens about the significance of the holiday and efforts around reparations for descendants of slaves living in California. Program participants include California Reparations Task Force member Assemblyman Reginald Jones Sawyer and State Senator Steve Bradford, along with KBLA's own Dominique DePrima, Ariva Martin, Tavis Smiley, and many more. It all happen Saturday, June 10th, and you could be selected to attend this special invitation-only Juneteenth event along with Dominique, Ariva, and Tavis. All you have to do is go to the KBLA 1580 website, click on the Juneteenth State of the Freed icon on the homepage, and register to win entrance into this empowering affair. Or you can watch the live stream of this special Juneteenth event by going to www.empowermentcongress.org slash Juneteenth. But head to the KBLA 1580 website right now for your chance to join us live, on-site, Saturday, June 10th, for the State of the Freed. This is a Juneteenth community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. I feel like you. All's my life I has to fight. All's my life I. Hard times like yeah. Bad trips like yeah. Nazareth, I'm f***ed up, homie, you f***ed up, but if God got us, then we gon' be alright, right? We gon' be alright, we gon' be alright, we gon' be alright, do you hear me, do you feel me, we gon' be alright, we gon' be alright, huh, we gon' be alright, we gon' be alright, do you hear me, do you feel me, I'm Tavis Smiley, this is KBLA Talk 1580, our phone number 1-800-920-1580, 1-800-920-1580. Glad to have you with us uh, in uh, the final hour of our program today. Uh, in this hour, uh, two conversations on the B side of this hour will be joined by Roy Wood Jr., fresh off his brilliant performance uh, at the White House Correspondents' Dinner alongside President Joe Biden. Uh, he's about to go on tour, his national Happy to Be Here Live tour. So we'll talk to Roy Wood Jr., get some laughs in, uh, which we could use today. Uh, just spent an hour talking about the death of uh, uh, Jim Brown. Uh, and an hour before that, talking about Tim Scott <laughs> running for president on the Republican uh, ticket. Uh, so uh, no fun the first two hours. Uh, we'll lighten up a little bit in this hour and talk culture and entertainment uh, with our guest in a moment. But Roy Wood Jr. joins us again on the backside of uh, this hour. Uh, in, uh, in this moment, though, uh, a conversation with documentary filmmaker and activist Tariq Nasheed on the Hidden History Museum. Hidden History Museum, which recently opened here in Los Angeles, curating, uh, as its name suggests, exhibits about untold history, stories long omitted from public discourse. I am pleased to welcome from the Hidden History Museum, Tariq Nasheed, into the studios of KBLA Talk 1580. Tariq, how are you, sir? I'm good. How you doing, brother? If I complained, I'd be an ingrate, man. I'm yes. glad to have you on and glad to have you in studio. Thanks for coming in. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, Talk to me. I, I, we'll, we'll start big and broad and we'll work our way through uh, this half hour. Talk to me about the Hidden History Museum and what 
where this idea came from, how you got it online. Just talk to me about it. Yeah, you know, I, I did a whole documentary series called Hidden Colors. Mm -hmm. Very, very popular. We did Hidden Colors 1 through 5. Um, then we did some spinoff films, 1804, about the history of Haiti. Then we did a film called Buck Breaking, talking about the exploitation of black people during slavery. Um, my latest film is called American Maroon. So I've done a lot of documentary films that were popular. And I wanted to put together an institution that people could come to to learn more about the things I talked about in the documentaries. Mm -hmm. So I came up with the idea of doing a museum talking about untold history. We did a Indiegogo campaign, mm -hmm. raised over a million dollars in a month. And a year later, we got it open on Jefferson Boulevard right now. So yeah. it's popping. Yeah. Um, that's a mouthful. So yeah, let, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, <laughs> let, me, let me give you a chance to start unpacking some of that for yes, me. Yes, yes. Um, uh, uh, first of all, when you uh, conceptualize the notion of a, of a space yeah. where folk could come uh, and learn more about this hidden history, mm -hmm. and let me just say, uh, every time I... Uh, learn something that I didn't know. Uh, on the one hand, I feel empowered by that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, mm -hmm. I almost feel sort of stupid. Like, why didn't I know this? Yeah, yeah. I've considered yeah. myself reasonably learned it, mm -hmm. but 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 why didn't I know this? I mean, I think many of us felt that way when the movie Hidden Figures came out. Yeah, like we we see yeah. this stuff all the time, mm -hmm. stuff that we just don't know. So my first question is, what do you make of that? That there's so much history. Uh, that speaks to the grand contributions that we've made. Mm -hmm. I think Du Bois, the great black intellectual, once asked, would America have been America without her Negro people? Right. Would, that's Du Boisian right. to the core, yeah. right? Would mm -hmm. America have been America without her Negro people? The answer, of course, is a resounding no. Mm -hmm. And yet every so often, I find myself learning something about the grand contributions that we've made uh, to this nation that I just didn't know. What do you make of that reality, first of all? Well, when you start to learn the truth, not only do you become enlightened, you become angry because mm. you realize that this was deliberately hidden from us. Yes. Because part of the game is for black people to feel like we are dependent upon the dominant society for everything and we can't do anything without them. When we learn the truth, that's when we wake up, and that's why they have an anti-woke movement. Think mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. The opposite of woke is sleep. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about we need to stop these black folks from being so woke out here. Um, they hate the dominant society when we are understanding who we are because that empowers us, mm -hmm. and they feel threatened by that. Yeah. Um, so that's what your work has been about with these documentaries, of yes, course, bringing is. us that hidden history. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about what happens inside your head when you start conceptualizing an actual space where people can come to learn more about their history. You know, I was driving down Crenshaw Boulevard, mm -hmm. and I saw a, a year or so ago a lot of people using our brother Nipsey's place as a tourist attraction. Right. And Nipsey, Nipsey was my guy. He was supposed to be in one of my movies, and he passed before he can be in the movie. Yeah. But I said, we need something more stable than just a death site as a tourist attraction mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. So that's when I said, we need to put an institution here. And that's when I started working on the concept of doing a museum here in the South Central Los Angeles area. Yeah. When people walk into the facility, uh, just to, uh, just illustrate, uh, yeah. paint a picture. What, what do I see on the inside? Yeah, what are you doing inside? Yeah, there? when you walk inside, there's several pictures of a lot of black scholars. We have bust, cast iron bronze bust of Dr. John Henry Clark, who oh, was yes. a scholar warrior. Oh, yeah. Um, we have... Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, who was an idol of mine, a mm -hmm. phenomenal sister. We have a woman, a bust of a woman named Biddy Mason, who was mm -hmm. a very important woman in Los Angeles. People do not talk about Biddy Mason and how important she was to Los Angeles. They call her the grandmother of Los Angeles. She was the wealthiest woman in the whole state of California. It was a black woman who was formerly a slave. California did have slavery here. This is why there's a big reparations thing going on. Um, there was a San Bernardino was a slave colony. She was a part of that colony, and she fought to get her freedom out here in Los Angeles and went on to become the richest woman in, in the country or in the state of California. So her story is not talked mm -hmm. about. They don't even have a street named after Biddy Mason in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a mural outside of her and some other scholar warriors. Um, we talk about black inventors. We have different inventions made by black people. We've invented man, so many things, it's almost impossible to name them all right now. We have, mm -hmm. black people have over 50,000 patents. That's when we could get patents because mm -hmm. when we were enslaved, we were not allowed to be, um, to get patents. So we've created so many things and we are the culture of America. 
We have to really realize that. Yeah. When we come forward, I want to come back to that to that money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that million dollars that you raised. Yeah. Yeah. In a month. Yeah. As a guy who's trying to build a startup black owned radio station, tell mm-hmm. me how you raised a million dollars in a month. I want to hear that story because yeah. I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> a startup is a startup is a startup. Yes. As you know, it ain't easy. Yeah. But this Negro raised a million dollars in a month. Uh, I want to hear how I, I want to hear how he did that. A great deal more <laughs> when we come forward. Uh, with Brother Tariq Nasheed on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Good thing we've got three hours. More of Tavis Smiley when we come forward. Calling all small business owners, entrepreneurs, and startups. Vermont Slauson Economic Development Corporation is your one-stop shop for the resources and tools you need to take your business to the next level. VSEDC is a community-based nonprofit and CDFI organization recognized for decades of technical and entrepreneurial assistance to South LA small businesses, startups, and entrepreneurs for 40 years. VSEDC provides training workshops and your very own business coach, and these services are all free. That's right. These services are free. Business coaches are standing by at their South LA Business Source Center or their Watts Business Source Center. Visit their website at vsedc.org or call them now at 323-752-2335. That's Vermont Slauson Economic Development Corporation at 323-753-2335. When you're young, life is full of choices. Don't let opioids like highly addictive and deadly fentanyl take away your life and your choices with just one wrong pill. Addiction is a disease that can affect anyone at any age, but there is a choice to get help for this disease. Find medically proven treatment options, including virtual, at choosemat.org. At the United States Postal Service, we're reinventing our network to help keep your business moving. With new shipping options to deliver better value, greater flexibility to conveniently reach your customers, more confident shipping with new informed delivery features, and new electric vehicles for a cleaner, brighter future. Fast, reliable, perfectly orchestrated. The United States Postal Service, delivering for America. Learn more at usps.com slash moving forward. Leroy, 71's backed up. What's your 20? Over. Olivia needs more drivers for her trucking company to go the extra mile. Three more stops to make. She wants to hitch a team to drive business forward. Lots of double nickels on the 169. You know what? I'm over this driver shortage. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. We instantly connect you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Find a righteous range and don't be afraid to say what you see. We're KBLA Talk 1580. We are indeed, and we're glad to have you tuned in to us uh, in this hour. Uh, Roy Wood Jr., uh, after news, traffic, and sports at the bottom of the hour. We'll continue our conversation now. Uh, with Tariq Na- Nasheed about the Hidden History Museum, which opened recently here in Los Angeles. You heard uh, Tariq say earlier um, and he didn't stumble or, or stutter uh, that in a month after announcing this idea, this brother raised a million dollars. And I, w- I want to start with this because I was just struck when I realized how successful that campaign was mm-hmm. in a month. Um, we could talk about the money, and, and maybe we will. What struck me, though, was... What that said about the need, the desire, the hopes, the dreams, the aspirations of black people who wanted a place to be constructed that would tell them the history, share with them the history that's been hidden from them. And when I thought about it in that regard, man, that thing made me warm and fuzzy all over, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that, mm-hmm. that black people would put up that kind of money yes. to establish a space like this. That's how it made me feel. Yes. I didn't raise the money. How did it make you feel? It made me feel phenomenal yeah. and empowered. And that was the whole goal, to let us know we have the resources to do what we need to do. Mm-hmm. If we can fund all of these liquor stores and dispensaries and chicken joints all over the place that we don't own, mm-hmm. we can fund something as simple as a museum and mm-hmm. a million dollars. When we think about it, it's a lot of money, but not a lot of money for exactly. what we need. Yeah. You know? So I was very proud of the community for standing behind me, helping us get the money for that together in, in a month's time, which is a record time to do something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Were you, be honest, were you, were you shocked by how successful it was so, so swiftly? 
Not really, because I know our capabilities. Mm -hmm. And I, I got the number big. I said, if I'm going to go big, I'm going to go big. If I fail, I'm going to fail big. There you I'm go. Gonna just throw the big number on out. Go there. big or go home. Oh, go big or go home. Lakers, are, we... you, are you listening, <laughs> Lakers? Go big or go home. I'm sorry, Greg. No, no problem. Yeah. But yeah, I knew we could do it. Yeah. I, I was not too, too shocked, but I knew we could do it. I know we Look, we are very powerful people, man. Mm -hmm. Black people, we've done so much. And other other groups come over here and we fund them. We have to understand all mm -hmm. of these other groups who come over here and set up shop in the black communities. Mm -hmm. It's our money who's funding them. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is just turn that money around to ourselves and do something constructive. So I knew we can do that. I yeah. knew we can do it. What, what what did the success of that campaign say to you about our, let's put a finer point on this, yeah. about our, how might I put this, our right to self-determination? That was the most important thing yeah. because we think a lot of times if we have to get something done, we got to ask somebody in the dominant society to do it for us. And we don't have to do that. It's the every little man, every little woman in the community. It's all about everybody getting on code and putting the resources together and getting stuff done. I wanted that mindset to be out there instead of not just looking for somebody in the dominant society. Another habit we get into is that, well, why don't you ask Oprah? Mm. Why don't you ask Michael Jordan? Let's get out of that, too. We can do things ourselves without having to go to the um, the moneyed people within the community. Well, to your point, though, since you went there, because you're right, we've all heard that. I've mm -hmm. heard it a gazillion mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. You have, you have as well. Yeah, they got all this money. Why don't they do this? And why don't they do that? Well, that's first of all, that's their money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they, they, yes. they get the right to choose to do <laughs> yeah. what they want to do with their money. Mm -hmm. um, but it does raise the question, though, as to whether or not uh, we have any reasonable right to expect that we can put, if I can put it this way, a black tax mm -hmm. on wealthy Negroes <laughs> to do what we want them to do. See, yeah, that that's a cop out. I think we yeah. want them because the Asian community they don't do that. They don't say we need Jackie Chan to build us a museum. <laughs> you know, they go do it themselves. Yeah. Uh, every yeah. little person, every working class person, they put it together themselves. We have to get into that habit of doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So because this history, it's called the Hidden History Museum. Mm -hmm. Uh, because this history uh, is hidden from us, as one who does the research uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to make us to make documentaries for us to view, mm -hmm. as the one who put this uh, museum online, when the history is hidden from you, how do you find it? Um, you go through certain records, you go through certain books that's not really promoted that much, mm -hmm. um, a lot of oral history, um, a lot of things are jotted down through personal diaries. Mm -hmm. So you just have to kind of know where to look and also travel to different cities because the people will tell you what's going on. I've learned a lot of stuff just by going to certain cities. Um, like I went to Buffalo, New York, and somebody just casually said, you know, Buffalo was founded by a black guy. Then I researched it, and oh, hey, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, our history is everywhere. And we have to really talk to each other, other black people too especially our older black people, because they know a lot of stuff based on oral tradition. And then when we research it and cross-reference newspaper articles, we, we can see the truth that way. How much of our history, uh, Tariq, is hidden from view versus being hidden in plain sight? Does that make sense? No, that makes a, a whole yeah. bunch of sense. Yeah. A lot of it is hidden in plain sight. Um, like we got a street called Pico Boulevard out here in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. Pio Pico was black. A lot of mm -hmm. folks don't know that. A lot of black folks were in Mexico. There's a school called Pio Pico. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Named after him. Yeah. 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 Also down in um Atlanta, we got a lot of stuff named Grady. You got mm -hmm. Grady Hospital, Grady School, Grady Memorial. Yeah. Grady Memorial. There's a sure. big statue of Henry Grady in the middle of Atlanta, black city. Now Grady was known for one thing. He wasn't a politician. He wasn't a, an elected official. He wasn't. He was a known white supremacist. He was like Richard Spencer of his day. Mm -hmm. His job was to codify the North and the South after the Civil War and let them know, hey, we have to maintain white supremacy. His whole platform was going around maintaining white supremacy. That was it. And they got a statue of this man in one of the blackest cities in the, the United States. Mm -hmm. And nobody really knows who he is mm -hmm. and what he was really about. Mm -hmm. That type of stuff we have to understand. Yeah. And Grady Memorial is the hospital in Atlanta all the Negroes go to. Yeah, they're that's, Grady that's the babies. They brag about being Grady, Grady babies. Grady babies, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. they don't know the history. Yeah, you, uh, uh, the, uh, the, he's a Grady was a white supremacist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so uh, I'm, I'm laughing, although it ain't funny, but yeah. I, I take your point. But, but it does raise this question, which is, which is the following. When we learn, um, my grandmother, Big Mama, always put, put it to me this way. She said, baby, when you know better, you, you ought to do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you know mm -hmm. better, you ought to do better. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, but what does it mean for black people in late modernity? What does it mean for us in real time to learn history that would then challenge us 
not just to re-examine our assumptions, not just to expand our inventory of ideas, but to change the way we move, the mm -hmm. way we show up. Mm -hmm. History has a way of of, of, of of making people uncomfortable yeah. and making you move different. Right. It'll make you motivated, though, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Because right. when we go through certain hardships, if I go through a hardship, I think, well, damn, Harriet Tubman, she went through worse. Mm -hmm. My ancestors went through worse. The black Seminoles down in Florida, these people fought the United States government and mm -hmm. won and had to be shipped off to Oklahoma because they were turning up so much down in Florida. That's the inspiration I get when I think about people like Bass Reeves, mm -hmm. an outlaw um, um, lawman mm -hmm. in Oklahoma, who the Lone Ranger is based off of, the mm -hmm. character of the Lone Ranger. A lot of folks don't know that. That's inspirational to me. Mm -hmm. When I think about Los Angeles and California and Allensworth, there was a black town right above Bakersville that former slaves built, and it's still there, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's a tourist attraction. They ended up messing up with their water supply and they had to leave, but those are inspirational stories to me that motivate me. When I see my people did that, I can get up and do what I need to do. Yeah. Um, to the point you've made now, and mm -hmm. I'll take you back a few moments to a, uh, another reference point in this conversation where you suggested that uh, that we are an amazing people. Yes, we are. We really are an amazing people. Mm -hmm. And yet, having said that, mm -hmm. uh, let, me, let, me, let me press you on this just for the sake of argument. Mm -hmm. We are an amazing people, and yet it seems to me that we are not our ancestors. Mm -hmm. We are not our mothers and fathers. We are not our grandmothers and grandfathers. We certainly aren't our great, 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 great grandmothers and grandfathers. And that's not to demean our people. I love our people. Mm -hmm. And there ain't nothing they can do about it, even though they've tried in my career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing they can do about that. I just love them. And yet I am concerned that, in, in again, in late modernity, that we are not our ancestors. And if I had the time, I could unpack that 18 ways from Sunday. You know mm -hmm. the point I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of our, in terms of our fortitude, mm -hmm. in terms, I mean, don't get me started. Mm -hmm. But but there's a part of me that is 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 troubled by the fact that on so many levels, in so many ways, I just don't think we are our ancestors. You want to disabuse me of that notion? Well, to a certain degree, yeah. Some some of us can tap back into that, okay? Because see, a lot of times we've been programmed after the 1960s into believing that well, racism has kind of dissipated a certain degree. Mm -hmm. They removed some of the signs because when our grandmothers and grandfathers were growing up, they had signs white only, colored only. They made it very overt. Now that they've made it more covert, we can play little games with ourselves sometimes. And the effects of the racism is still there, mm -hmm. even though we don't see it overtly. See, our families move differently. And they were more thorough, I think, because they were more codified with each other. Mm -hmm. They conducted themselves a certain way. They understood what the threat was. So we should be more like they were, in my opinion, because they knew what the game was. They were more awakened to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Um, when, when, when people come visit the mm -hmm. Hidden History Museum mm -hmm. um, and they get exposed to stuff that they heretofore were totally unaware of, mm -hmm. um, what reactions do you see in real time, in, in real space? People are just flabbergasted, man. People come in and they're very proud of the space. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. They're, they're proud of the location and they're just proud of seeing this stuff. And it's almost mind-blowing to a certain degree. And they just love the vibe and they love the energy and just the fact that it's completely black owned. Mm -hmm. And we got all the money from the grassroots. We didn't we haven't gotten any grants or loans or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are very proud of that. So there's a warm feeling that a lot of people have. And just the word of mouth is so great about the museum. We got a lot of publicity just by word of mouth. And a lot of people like to come on down and they bring kids down. That's another mm -hmm. thing I noticed during the day, people are bringing their kids down. So we're going to do more things that are kid friendly there mm -hmm. because we see a lot of that happening. So people are really feeling the vibe there. Yeah. Speaking of, of, of black history yeah. uh, and being black owned um, for you, mm -hmm. what does it mean in this moment, in this moment, in this experiment in democracy, mm -hmm. What does it mean for you to be black owned and black operated? That's one of the most important things of for me to be black owned and black operated because that's always been a threat to the dominant society. Anytime we start owning some things mm -hmm. and controlling things, antennas go up. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, going all the way to Tulsa, all the way to Central Avenue here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. because that was a thriving black area that they put a freeway next to and destroyed everything. Mm -hmm. So 
I know that I have to be on my P's and Q's because that's something that's not liked by the dominant society, us owning and controlling something, especially when they're trying to gentrify certain areas. So, you know, we have to keep our eyes and our ears open for any kind of danger that comes with that. Yeah. You mentioned earlier in this conversation, uh, Tariq uh, Nasheed, that this idea uh, came to you as you were driving down Crenshaw Boulevard mm-hmm. one day. As you know, this studio sits on Crenshaw, Crenshaw Boulevard. Boulevard. Yeah. And Nipsey Hussle, who you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. was murdered just down the street, the street. at Crenshaw Boulevard in mm-hmm. Slauson. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the the museum, the Hidden History Museum, is actually in the Jefferson Park area. It's, yeah. on, it's on Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Um, this is an inside L.A. question, uh, yeah. those listening across the nation and around the world. Uh, but why the Jefferson Park area as opposed to on Crenshaw? Yeah, I was going to get it across the street. There were two places across the street. Yeah. Literally across the street from here I was going to get. Right. But they were giving us the runaround. Mm-hmm. Major. We would come in with cash in hand, and they had every excuse to not sell us the buildings. Wow. Yeah. They were real funny style. You remember, they were trying to buy the Crenshaw Mall. It was the black group trying to mm-hmm. buy the Crenshaw Mall. There was a, white folks came and undermined them, gave less money, and then they gave it to the white people. They do that all up and down Crenshaw. Man, we were trying to get a couple of properties out here. Mm. And the minute we walked in, I'm talking about I had a check ready. Mm. They start babbling and explaining and coming up with every excuse not to give it to us. So the real estate thing out here is real funny style when it comes to us. You see why I ain't selling? Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> you, see what, you see why I ain't yes, selling? Yes, yes, yes. So you in a good spot, brother. Yeah, we've been there 20, 22 years. Yeah. I ain't going nowhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> Even though they make me offers every day. Mm-hmm, some, mm-hmm. Some, of the, some of them offers I, I really can't refuse, yeah. but I refuse them anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. take my and, point. And listen, yeah. we've already gotten offers on our spot on Jefferson. By the way, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I BS you not. <laughs> They're already hitting us up, dude. They so. tried to buy us out, man. They tried to push us out because it's gentrification yes. all around us, man. Yes. They pushing us out. Yes. But you like as we say in the old gospel song, like a tree planted by the water, I mm-hmm. shall not be moved. You mm-hmm. stay where you are. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna stay right. Yeah, real talk. We ain't going real nowhere. Talk. Um, two other questions in the two minutes I have left here. Mm-hmm. You mentioned reparations earlier in this conversation. The whole nation is watching California to see mm-hmm. what will happen to reparations. Given what you know about the hidden history of black folk in this country, but mm-hmm. especially the hidden history of black folk in California, some mm-hmm. of what you referenced earlier in this conversation, your take on where this reparations conversation is going mm-hmm. now that the task force has made their recommendations to the, right. to the legislature. Right. So I've been, I was real instrumental in that. I was just at the, the last hearing up there in the Bay Area speaking at the reparations hearing. So we've been really, really pushing that heavy. Um, if Gavin Newsom and those guys want to try to dangle a carrot in our faces and then renege on it. That's going to look bad for the Democratic Party. So be it. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to do something. Black people, we got to get some kind of tangibles out here in California. We have too many homeless black people, black people suffering, struggling, and you have all of these other groups coming in and getting our resources. So that has to change. I'm concerned uh, about uh, Gavin Newsom. I'm worried about him Mm -hmm. because he's the one to put this thing on the books. I mean, in terms of the task force, he Mm -hmm. was all all in favor of it when it was was just a task force. Yeah. But now these recommendations have come in he's mm-hmm. getting real quiet he's starting to move a little funny. yes he is because see, yeah. they thought they were going to really mess the language up in there and do all of this minority coalition thing and use all of these vague words and yeah. we were on the task force bumper making sure the language right that yeah. that reparations any type of tangible benefit is going to go specifically to foundational black americans who yeah. are descendants of slaves yeah we have to keep our eye on gavin Newsom. yes we do he's he moving a little funny now mm-hmm. um I digress on that. Um, yeah. Let me just say finally, in the minute I have here, um, John Henry Clark, you mentioned earlier, oh, yeah. and that bust yeah. you have of him. Yes. Uh, my yeah. very first, the audience may have heard this story before, my very first trip out of this country was a trip to Africa. Mm. I was honored that my Angelo, my godmother basically, mm. took me with her mm. for 10 days to Ghana. Oh, wow. And in that trip, uh, on that trip to Ghana, she was giving a Du Bois lecture at the home of Du Bois in Accra. Mm-hmm. And at that lecture that day were my Angelo, of course, John Henry Clark, mm, mm. <laughs> Stokely Carmichael, who was then oh, Kwame Ture, wow. Miriam Makiba, mm. Hugh Masekela, and that's just the front row. Wow. Oh, <laughs> you were with the heavyweights. Oh, man. Can you imagine being a kid? I was man. a kid. I was just carrying their bags around. Wow. But as a kid, I got exposed to John Henry Clark that day. Blew my mind. Mm. And every time I went to New York, for as long as he lived, I went to see him mm-hmm. at his bookstore down in Harlem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John Henry Clark. Oh, dude, he was an amazing brother, man. Great. So very underrated so underrated man great man Mm -hmm. the hidden history museum is in jefferson park here in los angeles california whenever you're this way come check it out and uh, tell brother Tariq nasheed you heard him Mm -hmm. on kbla talk 1580 yes indeed the station you turn to when you've had it up to here with cultural incompetence kbla talk 1580 
Welcome to a Monday, May 22nd. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The NAACP is out with a warning to African Americans to stay away from Florida. Over the weekend, the advocacy group issued a formal travel advisory for the state. The organization cites what it calls the governor's aggressive attempts to erase black history and to restrict DEI programs in Florida schools. It's still pens and pencils down for the Writers Guild of America as a now weeks-long strike continues. The strike started after the WGA's contract with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers expired on May 2nd. WGA members have been picketing outside of movie and TV studios in Los Angeles, including Universal Studios, Paramount, and the Disney, as well as Warner Brothers lots. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Now during Staples Small Business Deal Days, when rewards members spend $100 or more, they get $20 back in rewards, plus another $10 back with a Staples Connect app. Rewards offer ends May 27th, limit one, redeemable in-store only. Say big for your business at Staples. Is this, the title? this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. History is not on the Lakers side tonight in Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals against Denver. 149 teams have tried to come back from an 0-3 deficit in the NBA playoffs. All 149 didn't make it. Somehow, the Lakers need to put four wins together to see if they can shake up history and make it to the NBA Finals. They need to start tonight at Crypto.com. Otherwise, their season is over. Tip off at 530 on ESPN. The Miami Heat blew out Boston by 26 to move within one win of the NBA Finals. Gabe Vincent, one of four undrafted Miami players, led the Heat with 29 points. The Dodgers lose again in St. Louis. They gave up 37 runs in their four-game series with the Cardinals. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America. The story of Emmett Till and his mother is a story of a family's promise and loss in a nation's reckoning with hate, violence, and abuse of power. It's a story that was seared into our memory and our conscience, the nation's conscience, when Mrs. Till insisted that an open casket for her murdered and maimed 14-year-old son. She said, let the people see what I've seen. The reason the world saw what she saw was because of another hero in this story, the black press. Jet Magazine, the Chicago Defender, and other black radio and newspapers were unflinching and brave in making sure America saw what she saw. Ida B. Wells once said, and I quote, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon the wrongs. Turning the light of truth upon the wrongs. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580, and we don't black down. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. My Isha Cairo here for KBLA Talk 1580. We're live in Los Angeles at J.P. Morgan Chase's Advancing Black Wealth Tour. And I'm speaking to some of the attendees today to see why it was so important for them to be here. Yeah, this is uh, Lathan and Tyler. Um... Main reason that's very important for me to be here is just to leave a legacy for uh, for my kids. Black wealth, generational wealth is um, is what we need in our community. You know, oh Chase, you know, you know, someone has to take the lead. You know, they're showing you know big business like Chase cares, and you know they you know they're putting their money where their mouth is at. You know, so it's it's good to see you know big institution like Chase. You know giving a lifting hand, you know, to the community. And, you know, you got to respect that. You know, it, it makes me want to bank with Chase and, you know, give them, a, you know, another look if I go to another institution. I actually see what Chase is doing for the community. That's right. Chase is doing their part to help advance black wealth. For more money support, tune in every day from 12 to 2 to KBLA Talk 1580's Midday Money Chain right here. Fantasia. With special guest Joe, Friday, May 26th at Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles and Saturday, May 27th at Toyota Arena in Ontario. Fantasia, live in concert. Tickets on sale now at FantasiaOfficial.com. Don't miss Fantasia with special guest Joe. 
not for everybody, but we're for everybody. You're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. Happy to be here. Oh, real quick, Mr. President, I think you left some of your classified documents up here. You can get to the... Yeah. Yeah, no, don't give them to him. I'll put them in a safe place. He don't know where to keep them. I'm a... But y'all look good, though. I've been, I've been watching and looking around all night. Y'all look good. You dress nice. You got the nice threads on. You got the jewelry glistening. Look like everybody got a little piece of that settlement money from Fox News. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about that, because I'm not going to have dominion on my ass. I love dominion. Matter of fact, let me just say right now, my favorite voting machine is <laughs> dominion voting machines. When I go to the polls, I make sure it is a Dominion machine that I use. If your election needs the truth, put Dominion in your booth. Can, can we stop with the grooming stuff? Can you stop talking about that? Drag queens are not at a school to groom your kids. Stop it. And even if they were, most of them kids gonna get shot at school. It ain't no problem. Don't groan, pass legislation. The untouchable Tucker Carlson is out of a job. Yeah, okay. Some people celebrate it. But to Tucker staff, I want you to know that I know what you're feeling. I work at The Daily Show, so I too have been blindsided by the sudden departure of the host of a fake news program. <laughs> we got to get Tucker back on the air, Mr. President, because right now there's millions of Americans that don't even know why they hate you. <laughs> Emmy, <laughs> Emmy nominated comedian, writer, producer, and recently the featured host, uh, recently I should say, the featured host of last month's White House Correspondents Dinner, Roy Wood Jr. is back on this program. Uh, to talk about his upcoming Happy to Be Here Live tour, which kicks off later this summer. Roy Wood Jr., uh, good to have you back on the KBLA Talk 1580, brother. How are you? Man, I appreciate you for letting me come through. The throat <laughs> a little scratchy, but we're going to make it through, man. I know I sound like a, I sound like Doc Rivers after getting ran out of the playoffs. So a little, little raspy. <laughs> uh, I promise I'll let you go in 20 minutes at the top of the hour, so I, I won't keep you too long. Uh, but let, let me just let me just say though that I thought you did uh, you acquitted yourself quite nicely. Uh, I've seen others not do so well, but I thought you acquitted yourself quite nicely this year at the White House Correspondents Dinner. How did it feel for you? Uh, it was a blessing just to be in the mix of that and yeah. just to be on stage, be able to try and say a couple of things. You know, I didn't really get to get into everything that I wanted to get to, so I just kind of kept it journalistic, mm -hmm. you know. And, talked a little bit about my father, his time with the National Black Network and Black Press, and, you know, the importance of the role that local media has played, you know, in a bigger conversation about black liberation, just about equality, and, you know, because nine times out of 10, it's local media that covers a lot of those stories. Now, unfortunately, because of what happened with Tucker and Don Lemon, that news broke that week. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to really dig in the way I wanted to and start a little bit of a conversation about reparations. Because the cool thing about the Correspondents' Dinner is that if you do it right, you can start a dialogue on a couple of things, you know, mm -hmm. and use humor as that as that wedge. So, you know, we peppered it in there a little bit. But, you know, like they say in, you know, in the playoffs and sports, survive in advance. There you so, go. You know, it's, it's comedy. Everybody ain't going to like every joke. I've seen some of the tweets. Some folks didn't like some of the jokes. Mm -hmm. But that's the game. That's the deal that you – that's that's the deal you sign up for when you make a living off of your opinion. Yeah. It's going to be people that don't agree with you, but um you know, it was it was a blessing. Yeah. It, it truly was. You said a few things here I want to give you a chance to unpack right quick Roy Wood Jr. Let me start with this. Um you've been at it for a long time so obviously you have you you have figured this out by now. I hope I assume you have. Um but when 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 you're doing uh, comedy um in the way you do it but particularly at the White House Correspondents' Dinner, how do you not take those kinds of critiques personally? Ooh, that's a good question. To me, it's more about whether or not you got the joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. If you didn't get the joke, then to a degree, 
I can't even respect your opinion because you <laughs> missed the whole. You point. missed the point. You yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, because because there because there, there's there, like you you played one of the jokes um, that I know a lot of people were jaw jacking about online was about the school shooting joke with regards to you know drag queens reading in the schools and everything mm-hmm. and the conversation in some circles around that joke is pro and anti trans and establishing and, and like people will use your joke to push their narrative be a pro and anti trans. And they go, oh, the joke is about that. No, that was a setup for a school shooting joke. Exactly. That entire joke is a policy joke. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the trans community. Like I use that as a jumping off, as an entry point into the topic, so that you could do a 180 in the middle of the joke. But when people miss that it's a school shooting joke altogether, how how can I let your opinion hurt my feelings when yeah. you didn't even? Like, we're not even speaking the same language Mm -hmm. at that point. And, you know, criticism to a degree, sometimes it's fair. And I think you have to look at that with regards to how you shape your comedy and how you grow as a performer. That's why I don't think, like, all cancel culture is necessary. I I would rather call it more critique culture because ain't nobody really getting canceled. But, you know, in the bigger scheme of things, I think you have to look at some of the things that people are saying about what you're doing and figure out whether or not it's valid. Yep. And there might be a tweak or two, and oh, God forbid, you get better. Yeah, it's but but it, it but it's tricky business. I mean, you do it well. Um, you do it better than than most I know. Um, but it's a tricky business, particularly in a setting like that, or in any setting, but certainly that setting, where you are using humor to really poke and to prod. And as I heard the joke, uh, and the response in the room, um. It 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 wasn't so much, I think, that everybody in that room, uh, Roy Wood Jr., did not get the school shooting joke, but the joke was a damning indictment of everybody in the room. Yeah. Y'all want to make the policy. Exactly. Don't make it. Exactly. That's, it. that's that's a serious indictment, man. And so anybody going to laugh and you indicting them in that way. So I, I understood it. And so I, I I guess the question is whether or not you expected there to be laughter in that moment or whether or not you expected what you got, given that you knew that, that the joke was going to critique everybody looking at you. Oh, man, that joke got nothing but groans. The yeah. whole three weeks I was working on that stuff, you know, I, I put... <laughs> You know, we put some support beams in place way back in February, myself and my hair writer, Christiana Mbakwe Medina. Right. And, you know, she's a former Daily Show writer. And before that, she was an investigative reporter in Britain. Um, so she knows where to, like, twist screws a little bit. Right. And I knew I wanted to say something about mass shootings. Um, but, like, when we were running that joke in the comedy clubs, it never got a laugh. Mm-hmm. It always got a but I feel like if you put a groan in the right pocket of your set, it's earned and you got to respect that. Mm-hmm. And it's more an indictment on the policy and in action as a group instead of me attacking a specific person. And I feel like when you're trying to roast the government, the government is an entity. It's a body. It's a corporation. So you can go at one specific person. But a lot of these issues have been in place before half the people in the room was even in office. Yeah. So it's an indictment of the entire system. At least that's the way I saw it. Right. And the way we were trying to put everything together. You know, some of the jokes got laughs in the club, but some of the jokes you can't even run in the comedy club. You just got to do them in that room. And yeah. like that's what makes that event so unique and so special is that a lot of it is comedy that is custom made. Let me use one of these fashion words. It is bespoke comedy <laughs> <laughs> for that specific night. I can't fake. I cannot practice a Joe Biden document joke. Yeah, I handed the president back fake classified documents to his face. <laughs> Where are you going to practice that? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, let me ask you before I go forward here. Uh, let me let me let me ask you right quick. Um, well, let me, let me premise it with this. I've been blessed to do a number of things in my career. I do not live a life of regrets, but there are some things I've done that I would never do again, Dancing with the Stars, things I would never, ever do again. Uh, did, you, <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you enjoy the experience? Did you like or loathe the experience to the, to the point that you would or would not do it again if invited? I would do it again. Okay. Let me start there. I would do it again because I feel like the next time would be easier because now everybody knows me. 
mm-hmm. and you at least know some idea of where I'm coming from comedically. I feel like the disadvantage that I had is that, you know, when you look at the when you look at the names of the comedians that have done this event, you know, over the decades, sure. so many of them were already established in their brands mm-hmm. before they stepped on that stage. You were talking Conan, sure. John Stewart, Jay Leno, Seth the Entertainer, Wanda Sykes, you know, Larry Wilmore. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like I wasn't necessarily as known. And if you know me, it's from The Daily Show. And The Daily Show is just a sliver of what I do comedically sure. as a whole. So I'm kind of introducing myself to the room while at the same time trying to do the job. So I feel like I was trying to do two things concurrently. Yeah. So, you know, if I got asked again, I feel like now I could be a little edgier. Now I could go there. Now I could have two grown Maybe three grown <laughs> in a set. That's what I love about comedians, man. You, get... you know my heart. <laughs> yeah. And comedy is only, a comedian is only as loud to go as far as you know what their heart is and what their true intentions are. Yeah. I thought about, speaking, speaking of comedians, I thought about Eddie, Eddie Murphy in that moment. Uh, remember Eddie's joke? You give, give a Negro a rope, you want to be a cowboy. Uh, so you, you, <laughs> you, let, you, let Roy Wood, you, you let Roy Wood Jr. loose, uh, and now he knows he can get two or three groaners next time. And let me just say this before we come forward. Uh, they know you now. They know the name Roy Wood Jr. now, uh, and I hope uh, that uh, there will be an invite in the future to do it once again. When we come forward, we'll talk about uh, the Happy to Be Here Live Tour, which kicks off this summer. Roy Wood Jr. is our guest right now on KBLA Talk 1580. Be sure to like and follow Tavis Smiley at The Real Tavis Smiley. And get Twitter updates at Tavis Smiley. The conversation continues when we come forward. Forward. The pandemic may be over, but many Angelinos could be at risk of losing the place they call home. It's important to know your rights as a residential renter in the city of L.A. Did you know eviction protection still exists for unpaid COVID-19 rental debt that was due before March 31st, 2023? And that you have five days to respond to an eviction notice, also known as an unlawful detainer. Learn more about your rental rights at housing.lacity.org. Be informed, be protected, be at home. We've got a lot got to, talk a lot about. to talk about. I'm Reverend Gerald, the Life Coach. Is someone you love struggling with addiction and mental illness? Is improving your family's health important? Want to leave a legacy that your family can grow? Are you ready to enhance your perception of life experiences? Then wake up weekends at 7 a.m. with Urban Family Focus and get the wisdom, opportunity, resources, and motivation to live your best life. Join the conversation on Urban Family Focus Saturday and Sunday at 7 a.m. Unapologetically progressive, KBLA Talk 151880. We've got your black. black. Life is uncertain. It's okay to feel stressed, anxious, worried, or frustrated. It's normal. With Cal Hope's free and secure mental health resources, it's easy to get the help you and your loved ones need when you need it the most. Call our warm line at 833-317-4673 or live chat at calhope.org today. On Saturday, May 27th and Sunday, May 28th, join Pastor Shep Crawford and other local houses of worship for the Apology Tour. Details about the Saturday, May 27th press conference and the Sunday, May 28th walkout are available at theapologytour.com. The Apology Tour is a united effort to engage the community and serve the least among us by tearing down the walls of division, misunderstanding, and tension between the church and the community. The Apology Tour helps to address the impact of the pandemic, which created a greater distance between the beloved community and the black church. The Apology Tour invites participating local ministries to walk out of the building and into the community for one to four hours on Sunday, May 28th at 12 noon to provide services and offer giveaways reflective of the community's needs assessment and priorities. For more information or to join this call to action, please visit theapologytour.com. Changing the community through the spirit of God's love. Let's unpack a little bit more with Tavis Smiley. The conversation continues right now. Right now, right Roy Wood Jr. now seems like a, a most propitious time for you to go out on tour. Um, so tell me about Happy to Be Here Live Tour. 
Man, we just out here back in these streets selling jokes, man. I think <laughs> at the end of the day, it's all about making sure that people want to laugh and that people and giving people an opportunity to come out and laugh. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and wax all poetic about, <laughs> you know, the role of the comedian and importance and all of that. But, yo, as soon as they lifted them COVID restrictions a couple of years ago, comedy clubs and the nightclubs, that was the first thing packed because people were trying to escape and people still need a release. So, you know, myself and all the other comedians, we out here, man. Mm. And I'm running my mouth about as much as I can. Let me let me ask you a question, because you've been around politics for a long time. Mm-hmm. Is Donald Trump the most snitched on dude in the history <laughs> of snitching? <laughs> and, like, just in terms of defendants. Yeah. Just, just people... Just the, the the only person who ain't snitched on Trump yet, it, as far as I can tell, is Ben Carson. <laughs> ben Carson, somewhere deep down, is still a real Negro from Detroit. He still won't snitch on his partner. It make me respect Ben Carson more. I hate to say that, yeah. but it make me respect him. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, as you know, snitches get stitches. So, uh, <laughs> ben, ben Car- <laughs> well, book deals, depending on how much. <laughs> <you think I'm> <laughs> and that's why I'm just a lowly talk show host, and he's 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 a brilliant comedian. Uh, that came fast and furious. Uh, but Ben Carson uh, perhaps remembers that from his time in in Detroit before he lost his mind. Uh, I, 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 dig- <laughs> I digress on that point. Um, let, let, let me let me pivot right quickly um, to something you said earlier that is that is a bit serious, even though we're talking about your tour. And by the way, he's going to be in Sacramento, San Francisco, Atlanta, Durham, Charlotte, Madison, DC, Minneapolis, South D.C., Florida. He, South Florida. He's going everywhere, man. So uh, uh, as a matter of fact, um, I'm looking on, on my notes here. Where's the best place to go to get all the dates for the tour? Uh, Roy Just Virginia? go to my website, RoyWoodJr.com. That's what I Just thought. Just type in there you go. Yeah, my name, .com, and that, that'll, get you, that'll get you right. Yeah, RoyWoodJr.com for all the details. I can't wait to see this tour myself when he comes to California here. Um, but um, he's everywhere. So uh, go to RoyWoodJr.com for more details. Watching my clock here. When we come forward, I, I want to ask Roy, Roy Wood Jr. something about his father. I've had this talk with him before, so I know – uh, a bit about his father's backstory. Uh, we've been running a promo here that you hear, um, uh, you know, every so often, um, um, quoting uh, Joe Biden. It's, it's it's in the president's voice at that dinner, talking about the importance of the black press. And I want to ask Roy Wood Jr. how he felt. I mean, I'm not, we'll get Miles to play it again right about now, so in case Roy hasn't heard it, he can hear it during this uh, next segment here. And then we'll get his take on uh, how he felt, uh, given all that his father has done. Uh, uh, and in his career, uh, all the work he did. Uh, I wonder how Roy felt hearing the president say uh, the following, which you'll hear when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 is an intervention. When we come forward, includes you. KBLA Talk 1580, turning pain into power. Power. Gotta stay fresh, my, my. Have you visited us online for the grand opening of KBLA.store? For the best in new merch, gift ideas, books, media, and more, log on to KBLA.store. Be sure to check out our KBLA team favorites at KBLA.store today. That's KBLA.store for all the official merch on your favorite talk radio station. KBLA Talk 1580. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America. The story of Emmett Till and his mother is a story of a family's promise and loss in a nation's reckoning with hate, violence, and abuse of power. It's a story that was seared into our memory and our conscience, the nation's conscience, when Mrs. Till insisted that an open casket for her murdered and maimed 14-year-old son. She said, let the people see what I've seen. The reason the world saw what she saw was because of another hero in this story, the black press. Jet Magazine, the Chicago Defender, and other black radio and newspapers were unflinching and brave in making sure America saw what she saw. Ida B. Wells once said, and I quote, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon the wrongs. Turning the light of truth upon the wrongs. We're unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580, and we don't black, black down. down. 
conversations that matter. You're listening to Tavis Smiley on KBLA Talk 1580. Any dialogue with Roy Wood Jr. is always a conversation that matters, and I'm delighted to have him on for another four minutes between now and the top of the hour when this uh, program closes for today. Um, so, Roy, I wanted uh, Miles, uh, my board op, to play that promo for you that we've been running on the station. Uh, I was just um, I was taken aback when I heard the president uh, offer such a full-throated defense <laughs> of the black media, knowing a bit about your father's backstory, uh, and you were there that night on the podium watching him when he offered those remarks. How did it strike you? How did it hit you that night? Uh, I thought it was, it was, it was very worthwhile. It was very, it's very moving. And, you know, and talking about, you know, my father's experience through black media, you know, my father was a little older when I was born. So by the time I came around, you know, there were a lot of radio stations where my father was their first black hire. Mm -hmm. And he dealt with a lot of nonsense, so much so that he would rather just be a war reporter because he said he could. it was less, it was less stressful to be embedded with black troops in Vietnam or in Rhodesia or, or, or down in, in South Africa during riots. He said that was less stressful than dealing with racism in America at the man, time. Man, man, man. So... You know, for him to come back and, you know, be a part of the National Black Network, which was, you know, at its time, you know, that was the black CNN. That sure. was the OG black Twitter, low key. Mm -hmm. We're talking journalistically speaking. So to hear President Biden, you know, endorse that and acknowledge that, I thought it was dope. But going back to what I said earlier about not having enough time up there to really get into the nuance of journalism, the black press is dealing with a gang of erasure because a lot of these layoffs that are happening in the media there was a gang of diversity hires after george floyd mm -hmm. well guess who's gonna be the first one to let go that's right now that it's time to start laying people off that's right all that diversity and equity and inclusion and belong all that stuff y'all be screaming about those are the people that are getting fired now so those people aren't even around to cover their own communities to even shine a light on all of the stuff that the black press that biden just praised moments early but nope. i didn't have time to, and also i had to make that funny and that ain't funny yeah. it's sad no but it's true it, it, it's real as it's, it's real as rain it, it is that uh and that's just that's just a roy wood jr's critique of the media um there's a much broader critique of corporate america which we've had on this program uh, in in recent days where you know corporate america doing the same thing as uh, as the economy gets tighter they're laying people off and the first persons they lay off are those d e and i officers uh so everybody committed to do more after the murder of george floyd and everybody's making a u-turn as it were uh in the media and beyond i digress on that point um so roy Wood jr how excited are you to get back out on the road and and what do you think it's going to be like well you, you've done it before since the pandemic but but what but what is it like in in this moment in the nation's history with all the up people in this country telling jokes in a moment like this the issue for me is that you know i haven't gotten out on the road on a regular since pre-covid i did a short run for, right. for my hour special that i shot in 2021 mm -hmm. but the proper packed out comedy club and you getting up there and you start talking about issues that are a little more divisive if you ain't careful as a comedian a comedy show will turn into a town hall real fast <laughs> and, and I don't need people fighting at my show. I move in love. I'm just here to talk a little wild and keep it moving. You know, yeah. Like I already said, I was telling folks, the first thing we need to do, people talk about mental health and, you know, using that to stop some of these mass shootings. The first thing we got to do is give every brother a haircut. That's what we need. We need anybody that's shooting up something, all of them got a messed up haircut. You ain't never seen a single mass shooter with a good edge and a tight face. It's impossible to murder if you feel good about yourself. And a haircut gives you like a three-day feel-good window. That's so. Right. That that's the type of stuff I'm trying to unpack, man. But you know, my stand-up ain't no different than what I do on the Daily Show. It's trying to find a weird angle on something that everybody's already, you know, running their mouth about. So. Hopefully people are, you know, able to come out and laugh and forget about everything for a minute. I ain't trying to have y'all fighting in the lobby. I, I love me some Roy Wood Jr., uh, and I can't wait to get to California, but he's going to be in California and all across the country, literally from California to the Carolinas, literally. RoyWoodJr.com for more ticket information. Roy Wood Jr., I love you, man. Thank you for, uh, for for giving us a chance to talk to you once again, and all the best on the tour. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, OG. Thank you. Stay strong. That's our program for today. Thanks for tuning in. Until tomorrow morning, and as always, keep the faith. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica.
Welcome to a Monday, May 22nd. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. The NAACP is out with a warning to African Americans to stay away from Florida. Over the 